name is Robin Wong and I have here the latest smartphone from Samsung, the Galaxy S20 Ultra. And on the other hand, I have the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III. Just for the fun of it, I thought, why don't we put these two against each other head on and do a quick comparison test and see what the cameras can do. Let's do this. Before we dive into it, here are some important disclaimers. I do not own the Samsung S20 Ultra. It is a loaner unit from Samsung Malaysia and I have to return it to them after this video. This is not about bashing any camera. I'm not bashing the smartphone camera. I'm not bashing any cameras at all. In fact, if you want to look at people bashing anything or say that any camera or smartphone sucks, this is probably not the right channel for you. I am not doing a full review of the S20 Ultra's camera. In fact, there are a lot of other reviewers who have already done splendid reviews on what the Samsung S20 Ultra's camera can do. Why am I doing this comparison between the Samsung S20 Ultra versus the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark III? I am genuinely curious to see how far the smartphone camera's advancement has come and how close are they to reach the potential or the capabilities of a dedicated professional camera. I genuinely want to find out. That's the reason why I'm doing this video. The Samsung S20 Ultra has three camera modules at the back of the smartphone. There is the ultra wide angle camera, the telephoto camera, and the main wide angle camera. For this particular video and for this comparison purpose, I will only be sticking with the main camera of the S20 Ultra. It is because the main camera is the best camera available for this smartphone. The main camera of the S20 Ultra has 108 megapixels. That is insane. It also has an equivalent focal length of 26 mm coverage and a bright open aperture of f1.8. Pitting against this S20 Ultra's main camera, I'll be using the Olympus EM5 Mark III and the Mzuiko 12mm f2 prime lens. My test methodology is very, very simple. I'm shooting everything handheld, the Samsung S20 Ultra versus the EM5 Mark III. Now, I will also shoot in two modes with the main camera of the S20 Ultra, the full 108 megapixel, just to see how much benefit we can get with so many megapixels in a smartphone camera. I will also be using a default 12 megapixel, which is the optimized version that Samsung recommends. This is where the pixel binning happens, down sampling from 108 megapixels data all the way to a 12 megapixel fully optimized image. I think that if you're serious about photography and if you are shooting with a Samsung S20 Ultra, you should be using the default 12 megapixel mode to get the best out of this camera. Looking at the images captured by both devices under good lighting condition, it is difficult to tell apart which images were taken with the Samsung S20 Ultra's camera and which images were taken with the EM5 Mark III. This is talking about looking at the images without zooming in or pixel peeping. The images from the S20 Ultra came out really sharp. They look punchy. The colors are pleasing. Everything looked fantastic. The dynamic range is great. I think the camera does a great job processing the images for the consumers to use straight out of the camera without the need to do additional post-processing. I'm generally very happy with the images that I can capture from the S20 Ultra's camera. However, when 
when we scrutinize certain parts of the image, when we magnify and zoom in to pixel level, then it is quite easy to tell apart which camera was used to take which image. The EM5 Mark III has a superior JPEG processing algorithm in comparison to the S20 Ultra. And I don't blame Samsung because this is a consumer product. They process the images to look more baked or cooked and look beautiful, punchy straight out of the camera. But in doing so, they also sacrifice fine details. They have too much aggressive noise reduction, even at base ISO. You see some smearing in the images, in parts of the images where they're supposed to be sharp. They are sharpening artifacts. The image look a little bit over sharpened. And overall, I believe the processing could have been a little bit better. Switching the S20 Ultra's mode to the 108 megapixel capture does not necessarily improve the image quality. Yes, we do get a lot more pixels captured, the image does look a little bit sharper, but having a lot more megapixels in a very small image sensor, which is used in the S20 Ultra's camera, it only magnifies a lot of problems and flaws captured by the image. Now, looking at the images, the image was not necessarily optimized 408 megapixels. You see a lot of problems. The chromatic aberration is magnified. The corner softness is even more evident. And per pixel sharpness drops. When we zoom into 100% view, the image looks really, really soft. I would generally advise you not to use 108 megapixels. I don't really see any advantage of using this. The main purpose why Samsung includes 108 megapixels cramping it into a small sensor is so that they can record a lot more data to be used for pixel binning, downsampling into a more optimized 12 megapixel image. So what you should be really getting the best out of the S20 Ultra's camera is the default 12 megapixel mode. So avoid the 108 megapixel. You don't really benefit anything from gathering the 108 megapixels. You just waste more file size into your smartphone storage and you already get the best and optimized image from the 12 megapixel capture. Now that it is after sunset, finally it is dark enough for us to do low light shooting comparison tests. In dim lighting condition, this is the perfect opportunity to torture both the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra as well as the Olympus EM5 Mark III. The testing methodology remains the same. I'm going to shoot with both the Samsung S20 Ultra and the EM5 Mark III handheld. This is to simulate the real life shooting environment. I'm sure if you are using the Samsung S20 Ultra, you're not going to lug around a tripod with you everywhere. Hence, shooting with handheld, this is to give you a real, as close as possible to real life practical results that you can get using the smartphone camera. First, we will use the Samsung S20 Ultra's default settings for the main camera shooting the low light environment. Then we will explore the night mode a little bit later. For now, we'll just use what the camera's auto setting will give us. And on the Olympus EM5 Mark III, I'll set the camera to P for program mode, as well as ISO Auto. Looking at the images taken with the Samsung S20 Ultra, I'm very pleased with the results. Without even zooming in, looking at the full image on display on my full monitor, I'm very happy with the color, the rendition, the sharpness, and the image looks really, really good. However, when we zoom in, when we pixel peep and we magnify certain parts of the image, all the problems I've said earlier during the good lighting condition test, such as the smearing of fine details, aggressive noise reduction, aggressive sharpening and sharpening artifacts, all these problems are even worse in the low light environment. This problem doesn't happen in Olympus EM5 Mark III's images. The images from the Olympus camera shows a lot more integrity. There's less noise captured. If you pixel peep, if you really look at the pixel quality, it is still intact. The details are still there. Everything looks perfectly fine. There's no excessive noise. There's no aggressive noise reduction. Sharpening was at the right level and the JPEG processing was done tastefully. When we turn on the night mode on the Samsung S20 Ultra, 
things don't necessarily get better. I don't know how or where all the praise comes from with all the reviewers out there saying that the night mode is like a miracle and the computational photography makes a whole world of difference using a smartphone today. I don't see it. The night mode actually makes things a lot worse for the S20 Ultra's night shooting. The night mode is trying too hard to brighten areas that were supposed to be dark when we are shooting at night. I would prefer the shadow area to remain in the shadow. I don't need the camera to artificially brighten everything. It is not daytime. I want my night photographs to look like it is a night photograph. That's what the Samsung S20 Ultra's camera is trying to do in the night mode. It brightens everything everything and it looks so artificial. By brightening everything, it boosts up the ISO numbers. It also slows down the shutter speed drastically, making the images more susceptible to handshake when you handhold the camera. And the higher ISO, the incredible numbers, makes the photograph even worse, having more noise to deal with, aggressive noise reduction, making the smearing of pixels even worse. And the images just look very bad if you really pixel peep and if you do do care about the structure and pixel integrity of your image. For me personally, I would highly, highly recommend that you don't use the night mode. The default camera is already very good. It is good enough to shoot night photographs with some decent lighting as long as it's not too dark. The main camera has a bright open aperture f1.8, which is great for low light shooting, and it has image stabilization to help you stabilize hand holding the Samsung S20 Ultra. Since the Samsung S20 Ultra is equipped with Pro Mode where I can manually control the ISO numbers and finally in this S20 Ultra I can control the ISO numbers up to ISO 3200. Let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison between the Samsung S20 Ultra, ISO 400 all the way to ISO 3200 versus the Olympus EM5 Mark III. Looking at the high ISO images, I'm perfectly happy with what the Samsung S20 Ultra can do at ISO 400. I wouldn't go further than 400 if I need, I'll probably stretch to 800, but even at ISO 800, you get a lot of mushy details, lost fine pixel quality, as well as smearing thanks to the high and aggressive noise reduction setting. On the EM5 Mark III, however, even all the way up to ISO 3200 or even 6400, you still have plenty of fine details intact in the camera, a lot of contrast, a lot of good color, everything still looks very very sharp and the pixel integrity is still perfectly intact. This is not the case for the Samsung S20 Ultra's camera. Anything above ISO 800 is just a mess and you can actually see the degradation of the image quality even without zooming into the image. Looking at the image as is, it appears soft, it appears painterly and I would really recommend shying away from anything higher than ISO 400. I have done basic comparisons between the two cameras, the Samsung S20 Ultra and the Olympus EM5 Mark III in various situations, in good light, as well as in low light condition. I am actually genuinely impressed with what the Samsung S20 Ultra can do. In fact, I believe based on my limited experience using smartphone cameras, I think that this is one of the best, if not the best smartphone camera out there today. In good lighting condition, images come out perfectly fine and it is ready to use straight out of the camera. It is optimized with good colors, with good details and it will only become problematic if you really pixel peep, if you are a photographer, if you zoom into certain parts of the images just to look for the flaws. For most consumers, for most people using the smartphone, they don't really care about all that. They don't pixel peep every single images that they take. And for these people, 
there's a lot going on in the Samsung S20's Ultra's main camera and the camera does a mighty fine job giving you amazing results for day-to-day -day photography. And when it comes to low light shooting, I highly recommend that you use the main camera of the Samsung S20 Ultra only. The main camera comes with f1.8 aperture, allows you to shoot better in low light, gathering more light, as well as it has image stabilization to help you mitigate handshake when you hand hold the Samsung S20 Ultra. However, image quality wise, it is very, very far behind what can be achieved with the Olympus EM5 Mark III. There is no contest that EM5 Mark III is based on the image sensor that is designed for professional photography use. The Samsung S20 Ultra is designed for consumer use. For what it is, the main camera actually gives you amazing results. It is bright, it is good. You get very, very good night phot photographs. As long as you don't use the night mode, I'm not a fan of the night mode. The main camera's default setting is already good enough. Now, I'm not bashing any camera, may I remind you again. However, I do have to be very honest. A lot of people have told me that, Robin, you know, the camera companies should learn from the smartphone companies when it comes to computational photography, how they merge multiple images to make it better, how they optimize the dynamic range, make the color better, yada, 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 yes. It is impressive, it's necessary because you are limited with a very small sensor to work with in a small camera model used in a smartphone. It is impressive of what it is. In all honesty, after I've done a comparison of what is supposedly the best smartphone camera out there today against my own camera, the Olympus EM5 Mark III, I feel that the opposite is true. I think that the smartphone camera companies should learn from the camera companies. There are three things that they must improve on if they truly want to take the smartphone camera to the next level or improve further from what is already very good. One, you need a larger image sensor. The reason why the Olympus EM5 Mark III keeps winning is because the image sensor is a lot larger, capturing better detail, better light quality, giving better low light performance, better high ISO, better dynamic range. Everything is better in the EM5 Mark III because of the sensor size. I'm not asking the smartphone camera companies to increase the sensor size to micro four thirds or full frame. That is impossible. At least include a one inch image sensor that will drastically improve what is able to be achieved with a smartphone camera. Secondly, the lens quality has to be improved. There's only so much your computational photography can do, there's only so much that an image sensor can capture, but if the lens quality is subpar, you're not able to optimize the light that is coming into the image sensor. And finally, the third factor, JPEG image processing. Image processing is important. This is contradictory to what everyone is led to believe. Everyone thinks that the computational, the AI algorithm in the smartphone cameras are so smart and so great that they make images so good. But if you really scrutinize the image quality, it's not that impressive. If you look at proper cameras, any cameras out there, not just Olympus, the JPEG quality, the JPEG processing, image processing algorithm, it is done tastefully. It is not overbaked, it's not overcooked, there's no super aggressive noise reduction, there's no over sharpening, it is done just at the right amount. I genuinely think that if any smartphone companies can implement these three improvements, larger image sensor, one inch, better quality lens, as well as higher grade and professional grade image processing, then we can truly get something that is much, much closer to what a dedicated professional camera can achieve. I know that the test is a brief one, it is quick and dirty, it is not exactly 100% technical and scientific, but I also believe that it is good enough to give you an idea of how far the smartphone camera technology has come and how far it is behind an actual professional grade camera. I am actually very impressed with what the camera in the Samsung S20 Ultra can do. I believe there's room for improvement, but it is one of the best cameras out there for any smartphone camera. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to this channel and I will definitely make more videos coming this way. Until then, do stay safe during the COVID-19 pandemic season. Do take extra care for yourself. And if you practice photography, please, please prioritize safety. 
I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.